Now for one, almost zero emissions, just like wind. So that's great if you really think you've got to tackle the climate. Two, unlike wind and solar power, nuclear is there day and night, whether the wind blows or not, whatever the sunlight. And three, you can put them where the coal-fired generators are right now and just hook them up to the transmission lines that are already there. So there's no need to spend 20 billion going on 30 or 40 billion on new transmission lines. Big savings. Joining me is National Senator Matt Canavan, the former Resources Minister. Matt Canavan, uh, thanks for your time. Now, look, the government does point out that nuclear is more expensive than other forms of energy, not all of them, but a lot of them. But is that a killer argument? Well, um, it's not more expensive than what they're doing right now. And uh, that's probably the first comparison we should make, uh, Andrew. The only, the only world, uh, the only planet uh, where nuclear energy is more expensive than the solar wind obsession of this government is on planet economists. On planet economists, they run these models and numbers and you end up with nuclear being more expensive. Back on planet Earth... Uh, those countries that are, uh, are relying on nuclear energy have much, much lower electricity prices than those countries that have uh, put all their chips on solar and wind energy. We've just had that confirmed in the last few days where it's been confirmed that Germany, for the second year running, has the most expensive electricity in Europe. And uh, you might recall, and some of your viewers might remember, that Germany has made a big song and dance of ha having this Energiewende, as they call it, a green energy plan uh, for the last decade. They've spent... Uh, roughly 500 million Australian dollars on solar and wind uh, uh, plants. And all they've ended up with is much, much higher electricity prices, a lower, less reliable electricity system, and they're losing their manufacturing industry. The proud German manufacturing industry is going out the back door. So that's the real world evidence. And, and I, I like to live in the real world. I think people uh, want to base their decisions based on the real world. The evidence is in countries like Canada and France that rely on nuclear energy have much, much lower electricity prices Maybe we should try that. Yeah, Germany's energy vendor has been a complete disaster. You might also add Denmark, very reliant, being mm -hmm. a poster child for wind and solar, and that's got among the highest power prices in Europe. France, nuclear, about the lowest. Um, but it's strange that the Albanese government is so dead against nuclear power. When even... The, I mean, you could... Matt, you couldn't get a more left-wing government, I think, than the Canadian one right now in the Western world, and yet it is now investing in new small modular nuclear reactors. It's saying this is the way to fight global warming. Here is Canada's Natural Resources Minister. Nuclear power is one source that can help address the future demand gap and help us reach our climate targets. And that is why I was very pleased this morning to join my friend and colleague, Minister Smith at Darlington, to announce federal participation in the very first commercial small modular reactor project in Canada. And even the Labor Premier of South Australia, Peter Malinowska, says the ideological opposition to nuclear power, he says, is ill-founded. Nuclear power is the source of baseload energy with zero carbon emissions. So please, Matt, tell me why the Prime Minister still doesn't get this. Well, he, he seems to be wedded to a ideology, an obsession of the, of the 1980s. I think the Prime Minister seemed to cut his teeth protesting uh, uh, following a Chern the Chernobyl disaster and, and against nuclear dis or for nuclear disarmament back in those days. And the world has moved on. It's basically Anthony Albanese, Chris Bowen and the penguins in Antarctica that are left opposing nuclear energy because it's only Antarctica and Australia, we're the only two continents on the planet that don't have a nuclear power station. Every other continent in the world has lots of them and is building many, many more as you're... Uh, your, your, uh, your clips there showed. It's not just, of course, the can Canadian government. It's also the Biden administration. They're investing millions and millions in nuclear technologies, yep. uh, supporting uh, new nuclear power stations. Uh, the government's really got to get on this train here. And, and while I, I think the coalition, we, we also need to drop our net zero uh, obsession. We need to drop our share of this scare campaign on the global warming side of this to get back to real-world solutions. Uh, the first thing we need to do uh, is actually invest in all types of power, uh, not, I mean, there's a role for wind and solar, but we should be investing in nuclear energy as well. We should be investing in coal. We should be investing in gas. We should be having an abundance of energy so we can get your power bills down. Uh, you keep getting told that Absolutely. renewable energy is the cheapest form of power. How does that work out when your bill arrives? It doesn't seem to be getting any cheaper, does it? No, <laughs> the proof is right there. Matt, you said we also got to tackle 
the global warming scare, and uh, you, you're not going to get an argument from me about that. In fact, today there was more reason to think this warming scare really is a fake. Uh, you know, we, for instance, we have been told, Matt, for years now, I would guess it's about going on 20 years, probably even longer, told by the ABC that the Great Barrier Reef is dying, or in fact almost dead already, because of global warming. But today, I nearly fell off my chair. Um, it finally admitted what we've been saying for a long time, that the reef is fine. Have a listen. Last year, the Great Barrier Reef between Cape York and Proserpine recorded the highest levels of coral cover since monitoring began in the 1980s. The latest scorecard finds the situation remains similar, with only small decreases this year. The reef has demonstrated an amazing resilience and an ability to recover. And at this particular point in time, the Great Barrier Reef is doing fairly well. And then he said, he went on to say, oh, you know, this, but global warming is going to come back and it'll be bad. Well, you know, these projections, when is the ABC going to apologise for its years of predictions and scares and scares that we're going to lose the reef after having listened to the reality right there? Well, I'm not going to hold my breath, uh, Andrew, but to me, this whole saga, <laughs> the Great Barrier saga, uh, to highlights what I was just saying, that there's this disconnect uh, between the people in the real world and the scientists in the ivory towers. The scientists in the academic institutions over the last decade have, have spent their uh, careers bemoaning the reef, um, uh, forecasting its demise or early death, whereas those of us who actually live there, and, 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 and I live just a few kilometres uh, from the start of the Great Barrier Marine Park, those of us that live there have known for a long time that this is a natural cycle, uh, that we have had a lot of storms and cyclones which destroyed some of the reef, uh, but we knew that it would come back. And, and, you know, you talk to the old-timers there, there's a lot of old-time knowledge. Uh, they say there's nothing particularly sensational about what's happening. And guess what? Those old-timers have been proven right again. And so maybe, again, we should just get ourselves grounded a little yeah. bit more and focus on those people who are familiar with the natural local environment, listen to them, uh, rather than people whose whole careers depend on writing more and more grants about how terrible things are in this world. Well, uh, there, that's what you, we've had. Yeah, put so your got, finger you know, on the, it. The, yeah, put your finger on it, Matt. All the, the scares <laughs> have resulted in unbelievable amounts of federal government grants to uh, various scientists and bodies there. Matt Canavan, thank you so much indeed for your time. Really appreciate that.